The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Ada for every single week. Lady Ideas are Power of Engineering help you, yes, you find the things you're looking on for and with digikey.com. Okay. What's up? Okay, so let's go to my computer. So this week I've been working on this design, which um, is is pays homage to, is a derivative of an open source project called the Bus Pirate. And um, one thing this project did, which I thought was interesting, was it uses an analog switch to enable and disable uh, pull-up resistors from these four GPIO pins to an external voltage, which which might vary. And, you know, um, it, I thought it was interesting because I was like, oh, why didn't they just use like a bunch of transistors? You could do this with a bunch of FETs. And I was like, oh, you know, like it would take a lot more board space up. And it might be more expensive than just plopping down one analog uh, multiplexer slash switch. And then I realized, you know, we we've, we've never talked about this kind of part. We often um, have buffers or we have maybe op amps, um, but an analog switch is kind of a cool, weird thing in between. It's it's made up of MOSFETs and it's basically, you know, you could think, hey, I could I can connect and disconnect some things by, you know, connecting up some N channel and P channel MOSFETs and and you basically disconnect and connect um, a pathway between two IO pins. Um, particularly for analog voltages is what they're they're good for. They're called analog switches. Although of course you can do them for digital signals, they're just not going to be as as fast as um, they're, they're they're best used for analog. You can use them digital, but of course there'll be a limit of how how fast the frequency you can push through them is. And um, you know of course this is a replacement for mechanical switch, but there are some trade offs. Just because they're called analog switches doesn't mean they replace a switch there's a there's a couple things to watch for uh so first off you know you can go to um digikey and search for analog switches as opposed to mechanical switches right which are the, the clicky things and um there's a couple zones there's like you know the, a special purpose but there is you know one um main section for them and there's a lot of settings although not every setting is covered um, so the upshot is they're, you know, they're, they're silicon chips and um, the most popular ones are the ones that are kind of borrowed from old CMOS logic. Uh, so this design used the 4066, which is a four channel SPST switch. But there are other ones too, like the 4051. And of course, the, a lot of the CMOS logic as it became more modernized um, and more durable, um, you're going to see it called 74x you know 74hc vhc vhct whatever that series um so the 4051 is a um, multiplexer demultiplexer so what's kind of neat here is that you have one um sorry you have one of eight decoders so this one is a single pole octal throw sp8t so you used to connect one input uh z so z is the input or output you know that's the thing it's analog it's it can go bi-directionally um to eight different outputs you can it's basically like an eight-way mechanical switch and then you use the three logical inputs s0 one and two um to select which of the eight outputs or connections you'll have z connect to you have vcc ve power and ground you'll notice a lot of these um because they're meant for analog signals which used to be like positive and negatively referenced like negative 12 to plus 12. It's not that unusual to see these chips have a uh, pretty big uh, power supply uh, possibilities. So you can usually, while you could run them zero to five, um, running them like negative 12 to plus 12, is, there, there are definitely versions for that. There's enable and then a ground. Um, so a couple things to be aware. Uh, first up, there is, um, so this one has, you know, wide input range of negative five to five but of course your power supply has to be beyond that usually maybe maybe plus or minus one volt you can't use like a, a one of these analog switches that's powered off of three volts and use that to switch five volts like any your signal input output cannot be above or below the rails except for like one weird situation where it can um on resistance so unlike a mechanical switch where you have a resistance of like 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 ohms like it's almost nothing um there is a resistance so 
these low cost 40 xx series you're gonna get 10 50 100 ohms so you know just be aware that there's some impedance this is this is not a power like you know mechanical switch you can easily get ones that give you amps of current through this one you're not going to be able to drive that much current through and there's a, another um limitation of how much not only is there resistance but there's a limit of cur uh, how much current you know usually looks like you know 20 milliamps or so um between each input and output uh, so this power supply, for example, you can uh, run it up to uh, plus minus uh, five volts or zero to ten volts. It, you know, you can do either as long as the total uh, differential is ten or less. So that's like one example. But there's there you know there's others uh, the forty fifty one, uh, the forty fifty two, which is a two by four switch. So this would be good for like a stereo signal, um, two inputs. Uh, and then four outputs for each two, you know, two options for each. So here you've got one Z and then goes to, you know, Y zero, one, two, three, and then two Z, which goes to this set. So it's like two to four, two to stereo switches and four options each. So there's like every which combo you could ever want. Um, there's SPST that, you know, normally open and then you'd have to, do something to connect them, SPST switches. There's ones that are single, just like one little switch, um, different resistances. You know, again, like I said, the, the inexpensive you know, 10, 20, 40 cent chips are gonna be a couple ohms, but you can get one that are, you know, very low ohmage um, under one ohm resistance. You also get ones that are massive, you know, 64 circuits, which is kind of bonkers. You can't even imagine how big this is. Yes, this is like a beast. 44 BGA, but you can get it. All is available. Uh, what we want actually, so this is the 4066 series. I just want to, you know, show a couple options in the 4066 family. Um, let's just look at the active ones for now. And uh, only surface mount, although they are available in through hole, by the way. I did use them in lab when I was a student. They were very popular. Um, there's a couple standard packages. There's the DVQFN. Uh, there is the um, SOIC and um, the TSOP. Now we're actually going to use the TSOP um, in our design. And the LVC is a good family to use. Uh, it can run from three to five volts. And I'm trying to remember if this, this voltage. Um, yeah, so I would run it at five volts and then you know, I'd use three volt signals to enable it. But then if the external voltage was higher than 3.3, .3, it would be fine for my switch. I wouldn't have to deal with dealing with the above the, you know, it's, it's a little tougher to switch voltages that are above your power supply rail. So I think this is why um, digital designer decided to go with the 4066. So your enable switch is three volts, but the external voltage is five. You power this from five volts and then now you can turn on and off and connect those uh, pull up resistors to the um through the analog spst without having to worry about like oh now i need like two layers of fats to to make that higher voltage for for switching them um so the vht so this is probably what i'm going to end up going through the lvc sorry the lvc series is good um runs from a fine voltage uh you know it can a fairly low on resistance six ohms not going to affect it uh, each switch can handle 32 milliamps, plenty. Um, because again, it's just a pull-up resistor, and uh, it's also fairly inexpensive. So, you know, you're you're talking about like 40 cents, 40 cents in in a reel at a time. So, um, a good price. And so, you know, why not just do this with FETs on your own? You can, but for 40 cents, you just drop it down and you're ready to go. So, this is my great search pick of the week. Where is